Welcome to Bold Guy DIY. In this video, I have a bright and dim and bright and dim idea in order to take an ordinary lamp, add an Arduino, and turn it into an escape room puzzle. In my experimenting and learning with the Arduino, I had the idea to use Morse code in order to send either a sound or a light signal that could be used to decode a puzzle in an escape room. My daughter came up with the code that laid out what a dash and a dot is and also what each number was. So I combined those things together, turned them into a little project that you can use to create a Morse code lamp that you can use in your very own escape room. Let's get started. The lamp I'm gonna be using for this project is one that was destined for the thrift store. So you may have an old lamp laying around or you could check out a thrift store or a garage sale, something like that to find a lamp of your own in order to fit the decor or theme of your escape room. You'll also need to use LED bulbs instead of incandescent bulbs. LEDs can be cycled on and off many thousands of times, but incandescent bulbs lives are shortened greatly by turning them on and off. If you use incandescent bulbs, they're most likely gonna fail and then your puzzle's gonna stop working properly. For this project, I'm going to use an Arduino Nano, a five volt relay, and then I'm gonna use uh, an extension cord with multiple outlets, a five volt power supply for the Arduino, and of course the connecting jumper wires and USB cable to make it all work. I'm gonna start here by creating the code in the Arduino sketch. And the first thing I'm gonna do is declare pin number two as relay. The next thing I need to do is declare three variables that I'm gonna use for the timing of the Morse code. A time unit that you can change to get longer or shorter relationships, a space, and then the space between words. According to the International Morse Code, all of those variables have a distinct relationship as you can see here on the screen. The next thing I'm gonna do is create a function which declares what it takes to do to declare a dot, which is the shorter pulse. It's gonna turn the relay high. It's gonna wait a time unit, turn the relay low, and wait another time unit. A dash is defined as the same thing, except that it's the time unit times three because that's how long a dash is supposed to take. After that's done, I only need to declare functions which lay out the pattern for the dots and dashes. According to this, you can see each number is represented by a different pattern of dots and dashes. So I'm gonna declare each function calling the previous dot and dash functions in the order that they're needed. When that's finished, I'm also gonna add a space, which is gonna create the delay between the next number. In the setup loop, all I need to do is declare the pin mode of my relay digital pin two, and I'm gonna call it an output. And then in the loop, all I need to do is put in the code. So I just put in the names of the functions for the different dot and dash combinations. I just type the name with the open and close brackets and a semicolon separating the numbers, and that will be the code, as long or short as you want it to be. At the end, we're gonna add a delay of a W space, which is the space after a word is complete, which lets the patron know that the cycle has come to an end and it's about to repeat. Here I'm gonna show you how to hook them up. There's simply three terminals on the relay, a five volt, a ground, and a switching terminal. So here I'm just going to connect the yellow to five volt, green to ground, and then I'm gonna connect the blue to the digital pin number two, which is what I described in my sketch as the relay switch pin. Hook yellow to the plus, green to the minus, and blue to the S terminal, which is the switching terminal. Next, I'm gonna modify the cord on the lamp in order to be able to use it in the relay. Now, all I'm going to do here is separate the two uh, wires with a knife, and that'll let me work on just one and leave the other connected. You could always cut through both, but it's really not necessary as we're only gonna interrupt the hot line, the line that's carrying power to the lamp, and we do not need to cut through the other one, which is gonna return back to the circuit. Now that I've stripped both ends, I can go ahead and place them into the appropriate terminals on the relay. I'm gonna use the common as the power that's coming from the end of the plug, and then the other one is gonna go into the normally open terminal 
of the relay. In this way, when I have my code that says it's gonna go high or turn the relay on, that's gonna close the normally open contacts and turn the lamp on for that period. On this particular lamp cord, it wasn't clear which of the prongs on the plug was actually for the hot, so I'm just gonna be careful here as I trace to see which one's interrupted by my relay. I'm gonna make sure that goes into the shorter opening on the outlet. Now with that connected, it's only going to switch the hot wire, which is very important for the sake of safety, because when the relay is off, you don't want any power to be available at the connection of the lamp in case someone was to take the bulb out, stick their fingers in it and get a nasty shock. Now I'm going to plug it all in and verify without hooking up the lamp yet that my relay does indeed blink on and off as it's supposed to. And now I can connect the lamp finally and make sure that it actually works when we put it all together. When we plug everything back in, once again, it does flick on and off as it's supposed to, and my code is going to get flashed to the lamp. And here you can see the lamp turning on and off as it should. Three short pulses, two long ones, which marks the three, and five long ones, which marks the five. Two longs and three shorts, which marks the seven. and four longs and a short, which mark the nine. That's all it takes to create the lamp. Now I wanna clean up the wiring and put it all inside a nice little project box. So in SolidWorks, I'm gonna create a new part and I'm simply going to use the dimensions I measured where I figure everything can fit inside and I'm gonna create a cube in order to um, fit everything inside. Now SolidWorks has a really neat function called the shell function. So I originally thought I would build it up in stages but then I realized it would be easier just to make a solid block and shell it out with a two millimeter shell. And you can see when I've done that, I'm left with a 30 millimeter high box in the dimensions that I need and it'll be big enough to house all the components. Now in order to get the cords so that they will come through the sides of the box nicely, I'm just going to also create two little slots here, one on each end. And as I line them up and get them into position, hopefully they're going to be big enough in order to fit the wires through. Now if they're not big enough, I have a little cautery tool that I use in order to open up those sizes a little bit and I will find out that I do need a little more space to fit these cords in, I can just cut a little bit out in order to make it work. Now with the enclosure itself done, I can go ahead and make the cover for it. I just deleted the previous steps where I made the actual extrusion bigger and now instead from going there I'm going to create only a two millimeter extrusion and then create a smaller rectangle that's going to have the clearance for the sides of the box plus about half another millimeter in order to fit tight and, tight and have nice clearances. All I need to do is send the job to my printer and my box becomes a reality. Everything fits in there nicely. I could always glue it or secure it, but with the lid on, it's nice and compact and all fits together. Here's the finished project, nice and neat, tidy, ready to be used in an escape room. So it may be a little intimidating if you haven't used the Arduino before or tinkered around with electronics, but this really is a pretty simple project that you can follow along step by step and should be able to replicate it pretty easily and customize the code to whatever you'd like the number sequence to be. It can be shorter or longer than four digits. I just chose four digits because it's the most common in escape room puzzles. Of course, you can make this a lot more complicated, add in trigger mechanisms that would only start flashing once another puzzle has been completed or once a door is opened or any other kind of signal. You can make it more complicated so it was integrated with other puzzles or so that there was an audible tone that came with it or anything like that. But I hope this serves as a foundation for your own creativity in your escape room design, and I hope that you'll find it useful somewhere down the road. If you like the videos that we're making, please consider subscribing. It gives me that sense that somebody cares out there and I like to keep creating content. And check back every week to see if there's a new video posted every Saturday morning. Comment and let us know if you tried this project yourself or what your own experiments with Arduino have brought you. And until next time, in all of your DIY projects, whether they're bright or dim, bright or dim, don't be afraid to be balder.